Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Murphy and it's time for reading. Today, we're gonna talk about some of the words that we learned in our story, Tiny Rabbit's Big Wish. And then we're gonna go back and check for understanding using some of the clues in our book. So first, let's talk about some of those words we learned in the story. Um, let's see. All right, so the first word that we learned in our story is the word enormous. Can you say that word with me? Ready? Enormous. Good job. The word enormous means really, really big. For example, this elephant is enormous. He's huge. Can you think of something else that would be enormous? You're right, that is really big. All right, let's talk about the next word. The next word we learned in the story was height. Can you say that word with me? Height. The word height is used to describe how tall something is. When you go to the doctor, they measure your height to see if you're growing. The last word we learned is the word wish. Hold your hands together and say that word with me. Ready? Wish. When you wish, you're hoping you're going to get something. In this picture, you can tell that the boy is wishing he could get a puppy. What's something you wish you could have? Oh, wow. That's really special. All right. Now, let's talk about checking for understanding in our story. So when we read our story, Big or Tiny Rabbit's Big Wish, this story had characters. The character is who is in the story. So who was in this story? You're right, the rabbit was in the story. And then we had other animals in this story that he was comparing himself to. For example, the gorilla that he wanted to be as powerful as. Now, when we check for understanding in the story, the first thing you have to do is stop and you need to do some thinking. When somebody asks you a question about a story, you don't just make up any answer. Instead, you need to do a couple of things to help figure out the answer. The first thing you could do is reread. The words will have those answers there. If you didn't understand something, go back and read it again. Then you can use what you know. Your own brain gives you lots of information and your own experiences can help you understand the story. Then you can look for clues. If it's not in the words, maybe it's in the pictures. And then after you've done all those things, the last thing you could do is ask questions. If you're stuck, there might be a grown up um, or somebody else around you that might help. So that's why we have that question mark right here. So today, I'm going to ask you some questions about the story and we're going to work together to see if we can figure out the answers to them. So first, I'm gonna turn to this page. Page number seven right here. This page says, Tiny Rabbit wished his tail was as gigantic as a mountain. I need to think if I really understand that. Do you think that Tiny Rabbit actually wants a tail as big as a mountain? I mean, that's really, really big. No, I don't think so either. I don't think he really wants it that big. So what do you think he means when he says that? I was thinking that um, he means he wants it really big. So he compared it to a mountain because mountains are really big, but maybe he doesn't actually want it as big as a mountain. Let's look at another page and see if we can use some clues to understand our story better. Let's look back at that page with the gorilla I was just showing you. On this page, it says, Tiny Rabbit started wishing to grow as powerful as a gorilla. 
How could the story help you figure out the word powerful if you didn't know what that meant? You're right, it has words and pictures to help us. It talked about being powerful like a gorilla and then it shows a gorilla with great big arms holding on to the tiny rabbit. I think that powerful means really strong because in the picture, it looks like they're trying to show off how the gorilla is really strong. Let's look more to help understand our story. Okay, on this page it says, he grew two long, tall, powerful ears to help him hear every loud or quiet sound in the forest. Do you think he's going to be happy when his ears are long, tall, and powerful? I do too. What clues in the picture help you see that that makes him feel happy? You're right, his smile. If you see somebody smiling, usually that means that they're feeling happy. So I think he's okay with having his ears tall and long. Let's keep looking. On this page, it says, best of all, tiny rabbit's wonderful ears always hear whenever a huge hungry lion is near. Why do you think they said best of all? Why does hearing a lion help him? You're right, that would keep him safe. You probably used your own experience of knowing lions could attack bunnies. So we wanna make sure he stays safe and his ears would help keep him safe. Let's look at one final page for today. How does Tiny Rabbit feel about being small now? This is the last page in the story. So we know in the beginning of the story, he did not like being small. He wanted to be big like other animals. That was his wish after all. But how does he feel now? You're right, he feels happy. What clue in the picture gives that away? You're right, he's got a smile again. Boys and girls looking at the character's face can help you understand how they're feeling. All right. So today we went back to our story. We used clues in the pictures. We checked out the words and we even used our own experiences to help us understand this story better. Thanks for reading with me today. I'll see you later. Bye everybody.